All right, y'all rested then. Everybody got your, got a good got a good break from South by. It's been a week since South by, by Southwest 2010 ended. I think it's been a year. <laughs> it feels like it doesn't. <laughs> well, even if everybody from not from who didn't come for South by Southwest, they're like looking like, hey, this wasn't this two weeks ago. Yeah, it's not like these movies are never gonna come. Well, I'm sorry. Let's, probably, let's, yeah. let's, let's be honest. Some of them may not. Oh, excuse me. There's a lot of movies that are yeah. never gonna be shown ever again, except That's true. for this, that one week. Yeah, yeah. man. It, it, the, even more so than than ever because yeah. the whole scene with independent film is changing now. So a lot right. of movies just don't have that theatrical distribution outlet that they had even probably three or four years ago. Like with the Bill Hicks film that I saw, I saw the documentary on Bill Hicks, and uh, those guys are just, they're hoping for distribution. I mean, they were they were asking the audience just to get the word out, just to let people know, so that, that could help them get distribution. And, and for things that like film. that. And you'd never think that. Things like that probably will get distribution, you know. they For one thing, it doesn't hurt that, you know, there's an awful lot of supporters in the entertainment industry who've been trying to put a project like that together for a while anyway. But then there's the other projects, the narrative films, the documentaries about who knows what, some guy in the middle of nowhere that, you know, are probably yeah, just yeah. going to sit there and their, their entire existence from here to the end of time yeah. will be on a screener right. in the back of someone's crappy free South by yeah. Southwest backpack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, that's and, cool. And, yeah. and believe me, sometimes, sometimes it's for the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the DVD is going to hang it on the mama's refrigerator. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I saw my share of crap. At South yeah. By and, South. And, and anybody saw, seen, the, ever seen my, my, my master copy of the, the movie that I spent three years on? Oh, yeah. Son, it's got my, by rum and coke on it. <laughs> but that's the only. What the, Ain't yeah. nobody gonna see that shit anymore, yeah. man. I think that's gonna world premiere at your living room. Isn't it? Just, <laughs> this movie has served more purpose with my drink on top of it than it has than anybody ever seen it. Yeah, for no, some reason, it, my cat's obsessed with it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we're talking about movies with stars in it too. It used to be a day when somebody would make a movie and it'd be uh, an independent film, truly independent, no stars, no actors, some person with a lot of inspiration. Got lucky, worked hard, had friends with money, made a movie, and it went the festival route. And, that's and then they expected. turn into Kevin Smith and look what happened. Somebody's typing an email already. <laughs> yeah. I'm Kevin, tired Kevin, of you Kevin guys Smith. bagging on Kevin Smith. Every yeah. chance you get. I think every yeah. time somebody mentions in Kevin Smith, he writes a tweet about it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you motherfuckers, yeah. scratch yeah. you too. You off the list. Yeah. And an angel hey. gets its yeah. wings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and his tweets have more soul and compassion than any of his last like five oh. films. Oh. 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 Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I fucking said it. You got feel that? You got extra tweet <laughs> but no nah, man so now we got movies with stars in them that are not even probably going to get distribution i know we saw a couple of films that had some major stars in them. we don't know we got but my man cyrus over here was so nice he made a list of all the stuff that he saw now i saw most of everything that he saw because he saw way more than i did but i saw everything that you saw except one movie yeah and then i saw some stuff that they were nice enough to send me the screeners of then they watched and i went Oh wow, this is terrible! <laughs> and because they were nice enough to send me the screeners, I'm just not going to yeah. talk about it. However, if it was bad and yeah. I saw it in the theater, you're shit out of luck. It's funny. I saw your list. <laughs> I saw your list of screeners, it. and I was like, I was like, none of those films I have, I have no interest in seeing. <laughs> well, he, what, that, that's why they were sent to him like that. <laughs> no, no, they're pretty good about some stuff. There were even some big name ones in there. There were some of those films where like, well, he's actually got big stars in them, but uh, you know, I mean, it's a crapshoot like anything else. You're no, like, you gave me a couple of those screeners, and I had a really good day. Yeah, frisbee golf. <laughs> I love it because they probably sent you an email saying like, "Hey, you wouldn't mind if we sent you some of the South by Southwest movies as screeners, stuff like Kick Ass and MacGruber and some of these others." And you're like, "Sure." And they're like, "Well, we said like Kick Ass, yeah. but, but we sent you the actual." Movie. No, I was like, yeah. "I don't want that crap. Give we me got the, this. Give me the called. one about the dude in the middle of nowhere who does nothing for two hours." No, Cyrus got the collection of the ne- the next uh, the next uh, row of uh, Asylum films that were like oh, a God. pure ripoffs of all those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got ass kick. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> but this is terrible. Mac Ruber. Yeah. <laughs> or an episode of MacGyver. <laughs> yeah. You know, they were under threat of being sued by... Uh, the, the creator people. of MacGyver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't really, I, 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 I don't figured they just would have yeah. worked with him. I mean, yeah, they, they had actual Richard Dean Anderson on one of the the MacGruber, uh, you know, little shorts. Yeah, and in yeah. fact, on the Super Bowl Pepsi commercials they did with MacGruber, yeah. uh, he was on all those with them. It was like a running joke. Man, you That's know, crazy. Dude was sitting at home ain't got no yeah. money. Ain't nobody <laughs> seen MacGyver in a long time. He's yeah. like, just a lawsuit I've been waiting on. Yeah. Well, you know, that's that's true. Yeah. Any, anybody can threaten to sue whether they got grounds for it or not. Yeah, now that that Stargate closed on him. The thing is, everyone's calling that actor who played MacGyver 
way nobody's calling that fucking creator for shit. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so try again, man. Wait, well, it is like, look, if you get the actor and that mullet, you pretty much got the show. It's funny. I heard you sued McDonald's with a Mac Rio. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. <laughs> but I. Sorry. McRib, what are we going to do? McRibber. <laughs> McRib? Oh, you're so tasty. Oh. Well, that has caused a bomb in my pants a few times. <laughs> McRib. Oh, but y'all got, give me it, shit. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, come on, man. That ain't, no, that's, that's far from a pun that you ever do. <laughs> you can't even jump on like me. They're both shit. terrible, all right? Yeah. yeah. You guys are arguing over <laughs> Equally as bad. <laughs> Just in a different way. Two turns get into a fight. <laughs> yeah, I so I have uh, the list of movies that you saw in our co host. said Joseph have, McCarthy over here. Uh, no, hey. Thank you. <laughs> No, you have you have some movies. We don't have a list. Yeah, of, I don't have sure. a list. I don't. But I you, don't make you, lists. But I'm gonna try my best to remember all of them. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and go through the list that Cyrus put here, and we're gonna read. When we get to those movies, we'll read the synopsis straight from. Uh, you all right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm concerned. <laughs> There's a virus in the room. <laughs> the door is locked. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so uh, stupid give him his, geek his. bombast. We're going to read the synopsis <laughs> from the South by Southwest guide. When we talk about these films, so let's just go down the list real quick. We got Tucker and Delph versus Evil, Barry Monday. And if I mispronounce some of these, you correct me. I which will. you will anyway. Uh, assuming uh, that I know the difference. Morin Call? Got me. Sure. <laughs> we got a movie called Wake. Then The People versus George Lucas. Mick Max. The original title, Nonstop Madness. No. <laughs> I love the look on Leon's face. I know when he hears a title like that, he's like, I don't want to see this shit. <laughs> we have Mr. Nice. Go to the next page here. We have Electrolux. I can't wait to talk about that. Uh, Lovers of Hate, which is actually produced by a friend of ours. I mean, directed by a friend of ours. All My Friends Are Funeral Singers. Matt Gruber. Tony. And we got the last page here. Get Low and Cargo. And the one that I saw. There's a movie called Tony? Yes. Yep. Okay. And the one that I saw that. You didn't put on the list that I, that we're going to talk about is The Weird World of Blowfly. Oh, fail, Cyrus. Yeah. Fail. God damn, there's a shitload of movies that mm-hmm. I saw that aren't on that list. All right, I think it's safe to say that probably the biggest movie that was there, the one that was the hardest to get into, was Kick-Ass. We will talk about that later on the podcast. Hells yeah. Yeah, along with, uh, damn, that's a shitload of movies you got right here. So yeah, it is. See. Yeah, we saw some yeah. different movies. Well, that's yeah. why we uh-huh. had you guys there, oh, so everybody could kind of split up the yeah, responsibilities. Where, where's your list, <laughs> <laughs> slacker? It's up Leon's ass. Let me pull it out for you. <laughs> You're the Come one who's got a boy. <laughs> You're the one who's got a printer attachment. Yeah, Jesus. I know. Just download it from the satellite. <laughs> I know. Download it from his ass. He's still using that 8-bit technology. Dude. He saw two films, and that's all yeah. he could store. <laughs> it's it's all- hold on, man. Let me let me load up the internet page. This might take a while. <laughs> <Just> ink cartridge. <laughs> It's on a reel to reel in a building that takes up the whole room. <laughs> There's only two movies on it. <laughs> this co host has the computing power of a calculator. Oh, no. You're talking about two videos? No, two descriptions of a movie. <laughs> it's text, it ain't even video. All right, let's start out with Tucker and Dale versus Evil. This is a movie that we saw at one of the midnight movies. Oh, so you guys did get to see that because yeah. I heard the description of it and I was like, damn, I'd love to see that. Well, here's yeah, the, we didn't think we were going to make it in either. Yeah. But yeah. you go ahead and do your thing and yeah, we'll tell the story. Help this out. Yeah, let's go ahead and I'll read the description of this taken from the South by Southwest brochure. Tucker and Dale versus Evil is a backwoods comedy of horrific errors in which two unsuspecting buddies, Tucker and Dale, Fall victim to the crazed machinations. Uh, machinations. Machinations. Sorry. Machinations. I'm I like machinations. I've got an extra Z in my pocket here. I'm on. I'm like, on so, suddenly Popeye is reading yeah. this. <laughs> of a group of spring breakers who have mistaken them for backwoods killers. When Dell shelves the, his phobia of the opposite sex to rescue one of the college co eds from drowning, all her friends see is a bearded psychopath hogging their friend away to a shack in the middle of the woods and trying to rescue their friend. The spring breakers continually off themselves one by one. And Tucker and Dale try to figure out why these college kids are killing themselves all over the Tucker's property. And this is, man, I, it, it yes. more, I, 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 I know. I'm up and crying. It was a wonderful backwards uh, tour de force. No, yeah. no, okay, midnight movies, they're kind of iffy with me during South by Southwest. Right. I remember... We saw one one year. What was it? Alien? Were you there? Oh uh, yeah, it uh-huh. was. Yeah, you and I. We watched. Uh, what was it? Alien, Alien Hunter. Or something Alien like Hunter. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that about sounds that. terrible. And yeah. man, let me tell you something. I mean, that's like you know, I, I come in peace. Except <laughs> the cheaper. Hey, <laughs> that movie wishes it could have been. Fucking, I come. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew you were gonna say that too. <laughs> with midnight, with a midnight movie like that. 
when it got to South by Southwest, it was already straight to DVD. <laughs> they put on the DVD. You saw the menu on the yeah. screen <laughs> when they pressed play. <laughs> and I was like, my God, man, I ain't even right. trying. So when we saw this, I was like, I yeah. don't know, but all right, we're in, we're working, I'll right. go see it. See, I was and, proud that you believed me, because I was like, this is one of these movies I was excited about. I mean, in fact, I kept saying this was the most excited I was about anything in the festival outside of Kick-Ass. Oh, uh, yeah. Because I had heard about it from Sundance and people coming out of it going, you really have to see this. I mean, plus it's got Alan Tudyk, who's, of course, famous right. for playing Wash in Firefly and Serenity. He was the, the pirate guy from Dodgeball. Uh, he was the pirate guy yeah, from Dodgeball. Right. And then what's the first name on the cast list there? Tyler Labine. Yeah, Tyler Labine who was in uh, Reaper, who kind of played the kind of goofy fat guy on that mm. show. Show I really liked, but apparently nobody else watched. And I was like, okay, well, this... That was this... by Kevin Smith, right? Yeah, well, he only produced the, produced it, which means nothing. Mm-hmm. Hey, you got to remember, McG produces Chuck, and that's one of our favorite shows, sure. so shush you. Spank <laughs> <laughs> him across the street. <laughs> no. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> it really means next to nothing yeah. who produces a TV show. Like J.J. Abrams was overheard the other day going, what's going on on Lost now? <laughs> <laughs> Did you do that show? Never mind. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those ideas you're like, how come this took that long? Yeah. You know, I mean, they must have done every possible iteration in horror possible. Like every single conceivable thing you could mix together to make a horror movie and Really, this is so obvious, just turning on its head like that, that no one's ever actually done this. Right. It's one of those ideas where you you scratch your head and you're like, how come I didn't fucking think of this, <laughs> goddammit? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it is funny, man. It really does work along the ideas that they wanted to, because they give you two different perspectives. Like, you get to see the perspective that the college students are looking at these two rednecks, and it does play out like a horror film. It so does, you can kind of yeah. see at first why they're freaking mm-hmm. out, but they're all kind of assholes, yeah. so you do want to see them die. But it's not a – here's the key of the movie. I love this movie so much because it's not a mean-spirited film. It actually, mm-hmm. it's one of those movies where if it, somebody else was doing it, they'd be, they, they'd be so, uh, I guess they'd make it so, the, the concentration would be on yeah. gore right. and trying to riff on the horror yeah. spoof so much that you wouldn't care about it. It, it, would go over, it would go over the top and they wouldn't know exactly how to make the two balance out. Yeah. Um, and and that's, that's the magic of this film is, is, you know, is that when you're stuck with the uh, with the two guys like trying trying to renovate Tucker their, and Dale, yeah, when you're hanging yeah. out with Tucker and Dale while they're renovating their place, it's very lighthearted, it's very just innocent, and you really you really love these guys to death. But when they jump over to the the college kids, the whole atmosphere changes. And I'm talking about the cinematography, the music. I mean, it yeah. plays up plays it up like a horror film. Yeah. And it's funny just seeing you know that when you're when you're looking through the eyes of the kids, like. You see some things where if you were to look at it the first time, if you were to just walk in that theater during those scenes, you're like, oh, man, this looks like it's going to be a fucking yeah, horror t- film. Yeah, Tucker and Dale are like uh, 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 Lenny and George okay. from, from Mouse and Man. Just, yeah. you know, not not as dumb and not as mean, but – and these two guys, they're both kind of dense except uh, the, the guy that we think is the dumb redneck actually – is kind of smart, yeah. and they the, and these two guys are so innocent that when they see when they see these college students uh, being killed, they're freaking out. They're just as scared. They're like, "Why are these kids killing themselves?" <laughs> around our they're literally yeah. crying and freaking out. What, what's happening? And that's what makes it work. Think of something like Cabin yeah. Fever, where none of those characters were likable, and right. people do that because they want to concentrate on the gore, and they and because of that, they want they don't want you to feel too much for these characters. They want you to actually enjoy seeing them get off. And it's like, yeah, yeah you enjoy seeing the. The, the college students kind of killing themselves because they are a bunch of douchebags. But yeah. Tucker and Dad, as you, college you just, kids, you are. just you just feel sorry for them. What's well, funny because it's perfect because horror movies gradually over time have made the kids getting killed more and more unlikable right. over yeah. time. <laughs> where you're like, why? Are you, you really? You're not going to give us anybody to like here? And this like takes it ultimately all the yeah. uh, way around. <laughs> That's it's the like, thing, yeah, yeah the, the actual people that normally would be the killers are totally by far the heroes here. Oh, I mean, yeah. the line in the movie is when Alan Tudyk is, is standing there and like by the wood chipper because he's doing work and he turns out of the way and one of the kids like dives at him and misses and dives right <laughs> into the wood chipper and he's, he threw himself in the wood chipper why would anyone do that <laughs> and meanwhile these guys are, be- are getting more messed up so they they look more like killers as it goes yeah. along yeah like, like they, one the the, the, the who, who was the guy that's on firefly Al- alan tudor yeah he's the okay. he, you know he's the one that thinks he's smart of the, the smarter yeah. of the two and he's but he's running to all kind of shit he's getting stung by bees <laughs> yeah <laughs> he, he's uh, and he, he's uh, 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 what else happened to him? He's getting he's getting hit by all kind of objects, and he's just getting all messed up. And everybody just thinks he's like this deformed killer by the end of it. And, and, you just, and, you, and, and the, there's a twist with the other kids too that that actually works. It, it's it's a fun movie, and 
like I said, it, it, the hard stuff we've seen it all done before. Mm-hmm. It really relies on the two characters yeah. of Tucker and Dale, and you really like them. They they are like watching an episode of Abbott and Costello yeah. meets, mm-hmm. meets gore. And, and it's it, the, it, it's the, the only smaller film of the whole festival I saw that has I think has a serious shot as a wide release. I think they could totally make this a wide it's, release film. It seems like it was going to be a wide release only because I saw so many trailers of it. Which if you if you go online and see the trailer, I had a big issue with the trailer because the trailer is it felt like it was 15 minutes long yeah. and they were showing you pretty much all the kills and i was like what the fuck who, who put this shit together because now I, I felt like i feel like i've seen every uh money shot in this film but the thing is it totally doesn't spoil it for you there's such another element to this movie that is so much bigger than what they're showing you that uh you know as much as i i mean i'd say stay away from the trailer just when you see the film it'll make it that much more fun to watch um but i, I do love the fact that uh, it, this is one of those films that you see a trailer for, and you're thinking, you know what, this is such a great idea. It's so good that more than likely it's probably going to fail. And, and, yeah. and, and the thing yeah. is, it act, it it doesn't. It, it delivers on everything. It's strength of you. character, yeah. strength of personality by those two leads. Plus, we didn't even talk about this. The girl who plays like the one girl who knows that they're decent guys. They got the, the, Katrina Bolton. Yeah, she's the secretary on Thirty Rock. The kind of dumb but totally hot as shit secretary lady on Thirty Rock. Is that a secretary on Thirty Rock? They're, they they. Yeah, she is. is. Yeah, she's yeah. the one who's like a the really sexy girl. She's always got. Really oh, that good. chick. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's she's plays the the good girl, the only smart one. <clears throat> yeah. Out of that who whole like crowd. really feels bad for these guys. I mean, it is it, it is just fun. There's things in there like you you feel like these kids have a chance to come around, and you feel kind of at first you're starting to feel bad for them, and like. Okay, you know these two right here, they're cool, but then they have a chance to redeem themselves. And like one girl's like saying. No, like the secretary that he's talking about from 30 Rock, she's like, no, look, these guys are all right. You just need to sit down and talk. They're cool. And one of the other girls like, no, wait a minute. I've seen this. It's Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. You know, you deserve to die. I mean, that's people. And let me tell you something. Like, it, it does the horror job fine because we're not building up the horror on this, but it works. Every setup in there, every kill that they set up, people get it. Like the wood chipper, somebody gets the wood chipper. There's all kind of sharp objects around the woods, like tree trunks with sharp limbs sticking out. There's nails hanging from this shack that they're trying to build up. Everything delivers on like a kill that everybody wants. So, so it, it, yeah. So if my car does break down in the backwoods of Alabama, I shouldn't freak out. Be calm, because you will kill yeah. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and no, Leon, you I, have. I'm you, not, I don't know how people are going to explain you hanging from a noose. <laughs> yeah, right. I was going to say, Leon, you, you have no goddamn business hanging out in Alabama to begin with. All right? hey, man, Stay as here at home. Right? Another black man killed himself. Yeah. <laughs> he drove into Alabama. He drove into Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Committed suicide. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're, you're gonna end up like that chick. Just like you're, you're gonna end up like that chick wearing just the wrong kind of clothes in a bad part of town. You're gonna go, hey, she's asking for yeah. it. <laughs> Clearly, he wanted to die yeah. Yeah. By, by stopping and asking for directions. Well, y'all want to move on to the next movie here? Certainly. Uh, which is Barry Monday. By the way, the Tucker and Dale was directed by uh, another Eli, Eli Craig. Yes. And he was no, actually, no actually relation cool because that no, would be the last God. name. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody who knows how to make a movie. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, Barry Monday, and this stars Patrick Wilson and Judy Greer. You, you, you probably Patrick seen Wilson, a Night Owl from Watchmen. Night Owl. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and Judy Greer. Uh, she was. Uh, you've seen her. She's a oh, yeah, yeah, no, she's in a lot of stuff. She does a voice yeah. on Archer. On Archer, yeah. yeah. She plays Carol slash Cheryl yeah. on yeah. Archer. Uh, a lot of people in this movie: Malcolm McDowell, Chloe Savini, Sybil Shepherd's in is is in wow. here. Wow. Uh, but the here's the synopsis here: Barry Monday, a suburban wannabe ladies man, wakes up in the hospital after being attacked in a movie theater, only to realize that he is missing one of his most prized possessions. Can you guess what that is? His penis? Well, you're close. One of his testicles. Oh. Actually, actually both, both of his, his testicles. testicles yeah. Damn. Yeah. That <laughs> yeah, shit yeah, is just yeah. gone. Yeah. Uh, wait, Game wait, over, wait, man. The, the, before, just, just to get it out of the way. So is this the Corey Coleman story? <laughs> no, I still got my balls, bro. Please. I got a spare just in case saying. something like that happens. I know, like, it, didn't it we, might be a yeah. cautionary tale for <laughs> you. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't we all have that experience when we walked out of that new Miley Cyrus film? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that snatched our balls. That's Corey's going to be hosting the new Twilight Zone. This is episode one. <laughs> Look at the new Twilight movie. <laughs> to make matters worse, Barry learns he's facing a paternity suit, a lawsuit from a woman he can't remember having sex with. Filled with an ensemble of unusual characters, Barry Monday is the surprisingly heartwarming tale of a guy who finds it <laughs> too heartwarming. Yeah, no. it, it, you lose your balls and it's heartwarming? It, 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 oh, well, I guess it might, yeah, might as well warm your heart because you got no balls. Well, hey, hey, that's what it says. It took losing his nuts to be a better man. Now I kind of... 
<laughs> I kind of uh, put my own words in the yeah, yeah, but paraphrase, but uh, <laughs> that, now, yeah, now he has feelings. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> where where he one. lost feelings, he yeah. gained some of others. <laughs> yeah, uh, a better man. Who who's the one with that measuring stick to, to decide that's better? <laughs> well, you know, I'd rather have my balls be an asshole. If you are one of those guys, and this guy is, who literally spends his entire life doing nothing but obsessing about sex. I mean, he's one of those people who can't have a normal relationship with anyone because okay. he's too busy focused on whatever pair of tits is nearest. You know, he's one of those guys that you wouldn't hang out with. Uh, okay. No, no, I, because I he's like guys. that. And, when he, and this guy kind of needs his balls cut off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I yeah. see you didn't like the movie. No, I, I did like you, it. You, but I liked it better than you did. You did like it better yeah. than I did. And I think you'd enjoy it too, Leon. Yeah, that's I, all I, you've been I, telling I, me is that I, I should see it. Of course, I don't know about you. I have no, uh, I have no uh, desire to see a movie about some guy losing his ball. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, never I had yeah, any. Yeah, is not <laughs> of yeah. reference. I already watched Serbian film, all right? <laughs> <laughs> There's no uh, beach bimbo blonde tits hanging out. There's no monsters running around here. Yes. I, no zombies. <laughs> zombies. <laughs> I don't think that you'd like this. Don't the guy getting his balls cut off is kind of a horror movie in and of itself. Yeah, Mm-hmm. So who who is Barry? Patrick Wilson is Barry. Okay, right? yeah. Is this, yeah. And Wait, I, I, didn't he get his? Did he get fucked up in um his uh, hard candy? Hard candy, yeah. Yeah, this dude. Uh, he gets emasculated in every movie. He got emasculated yeah, like, yeah, psychologically yeah, in The Watchmen. That's Come right. On. Yeah. <laughs> he got his mental dick taken off <laughs> that much. But uh, it's, no, yeah. he just seems like that kind of guy. You want his balls cut off? Well, I'll I tell you know. why I like this movie so much. It's because it starts out. It gets it out the way. It starts out with a character that you don't like. Yeah. And then once he has that turning point, not only is he a better person, you like him, but the other people who seem like they'd be annoying in the movie, because Judy Greer comes in, she's the one that is uh, the girl filing the paternity suit against him, and she's just bitchy. She's like she's, she's nerd, great at that. I, every every almost the roles I've seen her in, she's good at. But she's, she's not, not like just a little hot, bitchy. Yeah. She's like yeah, and she's not hot. She's like total like like closet Herod and like oh what the fuck is wrong with that girl she's nasty and, yeah and like just mean yeah you know, she's like a 12 year old girl hell. you know who's like who's just going through that that period of turning into a it's, teenager she's like oh, you're so stupid barry there's nothing attractive yeah. about her at all yeah, which like, makes you wonder yeah. i kept wondering during the film he can't actually have had sex with her <laughs> well <Damn>. and <laughs> and the film keeps it kind of a mystery it's like well did he actually have sex with her because no. there's a big mystery there is it her is it the mysterious asian next door neighbor who keeps poking his head in around there i mean what's going on yeah and it does a good poke job. in his head <laughs> somebody, i knew somebody gonna do that shit that, leave that shit. yeah i did it. leave that to him <laughs> no, that's all right I, no. better one comes out of me <laughs> you didn't like my man yeah. real joke out there you yeah no, he's, I, he's just telling another cock and ball story <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Take this, roll that up, and smack him with it. <laughs> Time to end this podcast. But no, I know. And beat the fuck out of him, then come back. Where did, where did Cyrus go? He's in a closet. <laughs> but no, I like the movie because it it, it really uh, it, it does make the character seem like there's nothing redeeming about these people. And you begin to like them all after a while. I mean, they instead of uh, having a character who ends up being shitty up until the last 15 minutes of the film, you really like all these people. And even the people that come in and seem like they're going to be the biggest assholes in the movie, they end up just having to come together in a, in a, in a nice little ending. And I think uh, I really enjoy Patrick Wilson as Barry Monday. He's a guy that actually is trying to do the right thing. And it doesn't work out as easy as he thought it would trying to do the right thing. But, he hangs in there, man. And you think it's kind of a one note thing, but that whole conflict of having to like deal with this girl, then deal with her family, and then deal with friends and him not knowing if this is really his kid or not. I, I really like that character, Barry Monday. I really enjoyed this film. You know, I, I totally understand why you liked it all the way through. And my problem was resolved completely to my satisfaction at the end. But there really was a point, like even up to three quarters of the way through the film, where I was like, wow, this is one of these films where they real briefly give you just enough to dislike somebody and then do nothing but punish them for the whole rest of the movie. And it really felt like that for a while. I was like, man, I mean, I know he's kind of a douchebag, but really nobody deserves the shit they're putting him through. And I'm just like getting tired of it. I'm like, you know what? Fuck that girl. Fuck her family. Fuck everybody in the this movie even fuck Barry Monday I don't even care anymore but it comes around to a resolution that feels so organic I mean like they really do make all these people 
believably human by the end of it and they make everybody kind of come to a sort of like you know a conclusion like sometimes like even the worst people just need some understanding you know see Corey that's just what I was telling you the other night uh, <laughs> yeah. it's funny because the way y'all describe this no they don't and he actually was telling me that too <laughs> it, it sounds like like a, a serious man up until a point though, thank except, you except they, they turn it around exactly. and make it good well, but that's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say in the back of my mind when you start bringing up a character who keeps getting punished in the movie to me it wasn't like that because Barry Munn was having to learn himself and it's because of these uh, of these hardships he was going through that he was learning something like a simple man it's just kind of like man why don't you stand man. Well, I mean I'm sorry serious man why don't you stand up for yourself yeah and there's some outrageously funny parts all throughout this like there's a whole sequence where his mom who's really really meddlesome uh, sets up a meeting of people who've had their genitals <laughs> mutated <laughs> oh, like, something is wrong like one of those like intervention are you, oh my are God. you telling me they have fucking club meetings with people like, who like who Kyle Gass from Tenacious D yes. one of them uh-huh. but it's great because he's sitting there and they're all standing up telling what's wrong with them and he starts cracking up because he can't help it. Like the one guy's like, "My penis is is uh, sixteen inches long," <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> and it's as big as a spaghetti noodle. He's like, I'd be like, "You set me up in a room with these losers. This is what you yeah, think right? of me." And that's exactly yeah. what he t- gets out of it. <laughs> he's, he's like, like Look, "I don't have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't have any balls. Yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah. me out of it, it, keep me out of trouble right now. Did, uh, I, I don't have this shit. I'm not a freak. All right. Yeah. Did Professor Xavier ever like?" Like wheel into the room and go, hey, you guys want to join a really kick ass team? <laughs> a mutant genitalia? Mutant genitalia. You got dick powers over there, don't you? Are you going to join the X Men? Uh, not so fast. <laughs> we, we have a separate branch for your kind of freaks. <laughs> we are called the Sex Miss Man. And we'll brain lost his balls when he did the Academy Awards. <laughs> Welcome to the Morlocks. <laughs> but anyway, I, I think it was, uh, I, it's not a bad film as you can see. I mean, yeah. to some extent, it's enjoyable. No, no it I, totally won yeah. me back. Any problems I had with it were completely addressed. It's just, like I said, if you're getting freaked out because that kind of film frustrates you, it will be, you will be rewarded. Okay. Yeah. So here's one that you can talk about. Morin, is it Morin Call? I guess. Morin Call. Uh, M A R W E N C O L. Morin Call. I'm just going to call it Morin. Man, that sounds like a radio station. Oh, no. WNCOL. It's a, <laughs> morning call in the morning. It's a, uh, what do you call it? A portman, portmanteau when they mix words together and make a new word. I think that's the name of the term for it. Yeah, I call it like, 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 like a poor Port- man's vocabulary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this is a documentary about the fantasy world of Mark Hogenkamp. Damn, where do you come from? Harry Potter? <laughs> 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 yeah, right. You're a wizard, yeah. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> after being beaten, into that guy a, wrote that. <laughs> yeah, after being beaten into a brain damaging coma. God damn. damn. This is about, a real story, by the oh, way. Oh, oh, it's about that guy. Yeah, oh, it's about oh, this guy. Oh, oh, about that. By five yeah. men outside a bar, Mark builds a one sixth scale World War II. To era town elsewhere. in his backyard. Mark populates the town he dubs Morin Call with dolls representing his friends and family and creates lifelike photographs detailing the town's many relationships and dramas. Playing in the town and fo- photographing the action helps Mark to recover his hand eye coordination and deal with his psychic wounds from the attack. When Mark and his photographs are discovered, a prestigious New York gallery sets up an art show. Suddenly, Mark's homemade therapy is deemed art. Forcing him to choose between the safety of his fantasy life in Morin Call and the real world that he's avoided since the attack. That sounds fucked. Wow, it's like uh, that's, that's like the analog world of uh, Star Wars Galaxies. Is that what this is? <laughs> right, it's like a, like a Sims. Well, <laughs> yes. the, the analog version of Sims. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I saw like the the 15 minute segment on This American Life of, of, about this guy, and it was really fascinating. But the whole idea, like it was therapy. It it struck me as something like it starts as therapy because it, it gets him going again. But he seemed so totally lost in that world, like. Like he was only going to progress so far and never get out of that. So this takes it further with the gallery. No, he totally. It's watching him come full circle back into being a, a functioning human being. That, again. that makes me feel really good just to even hear about and that. And it's it's fascinating. Spoiler this alert! It's so well, yeah. It's so <laughs> let's all laugh at the hate crime victim. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I mean, one. I mean the way they, the way they set it up, they showed the town and everything he was doing, and he got halfway into, it, and then they explained what happened to him. Yeah. Like, oh man, that is rough. Well, the thing is, is like, like okay, so he he got this, you know, brain damage and. 
and and that doesn't really say he doesn't remember anything right like he can function he can walk around he's not like crippled in that way his whole thing is he doesn't remember anything that happened in his life he doesn't remember his parents he doesn't remember anyone he's ever known does he remember that he ass whooping he got he, he doesn't even no. remember the ass oh, whooping thank god but he yeah. gets little flashes of stuff like he, the emotions are there but he doesn't like really remember the events <laughs> and so he starts remembering stuff that happened to him in his past and making peace with these events and the anger and everything by acting out these super elaborate yeah. storylines so he acts I mean, like, out too what, what well with, the, with the, dolls. the dolls oh with the dolls and he takes okay. really good high end photographs of all of it happening and they're all I mean you actually get into the stories themselves because right. they're really bloody and, and dramatic <laughs> and it's horrible well, it's, shit going it's on like, yeah. these like, dolls. like you think about like Castle Wolfenstein where it's all very World War 2 and they start bringing in supernatural elements yeah. and his is all about World War 2 but then there's this science fiction elements and characters go in and out of time <laughs> yeah 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 it's it's weird and I think, uh, but, it's, but it's fascinating it's like, it's like really I think, I think Carmen did the same thing in that <laughs> <laughs> hey Mrs. Prince <laughs> Carmen you are cool yeah, get and attractive yeah, get this motherfucker some Legos he'll build a city <laughs> <laughs> but he's like I don't know it's funny there's scenes where he's like walking down the side of the road with his little G.I. Joe car with the guys in it and you're like alright dude maybe you should just stay at home <laughs> he's singing he's singing <laughs> yeah. just me and the boys <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's about to get his ass whooped again man. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody help this man. Man, that would be the most That's not even thing. right, man. That's so oh wrong. My God. Kick his toys yeah, out. No. Of those, kid, those kids next door bring their G.I. Joe toys and attack his whole thing. Pew, pew. Cobra! What's up, toy man? <laughs> yeah. So, yo, yo little dude, let, let, let me hold some of them G.I. Joes for you. Yeah. Yeah. Mine now, punk. G.I. Yeah. <laughs> Jose coming over and stealing yeah. his old collection. Oh, man. <laughs> so bad he just jacked my bunch of twelve year olds. <laughs> <laughs> those fucking dolls, faggot. <laughs> Damn. But man, th- no, it's, this sounds. I hope uh, he doesn't hear this review. No, <laughs> y'all are just mean no, people. It, 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 he'll he'll yeah. build dolls of each of us. I know, yeah, and we'll yeah, die yeah. horribly. Yeah. Well, like he'll be like yeah. real voodoo. We'll start feeling <laughs> pink. Oh man! All right, let's yeah. all start coming back to him. He's here in this podcast. Like, yeah. fuck. Yeah. Shit, I got beat. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry, people. I didn't know people who almost get beaten to death lose their sense of humor. Humor. <laughs> Man, but you know what? Jesus. I, on, on the serious side, you gave me the the screen of this. Did you get to watch it? I did not. But you, you both of you, are selling me on this. This sounds absolutely fascinating. It is, and it's really well made too. It's got an excellent soundtrack to it. I mean, when you watch it, it's a screener, so some of the sound editing is a little wonky. Apparently, they fixed it before they screened it at the thing, but not so much that it's going to irritate you. Um, it's really good and at the ending you're just like wow this this it, it even feels good because you're like this guy is he's finally moving on he good. used this process to go and and he's actually gone from this guy who can really never work a real job yeah. you know with all the damage he has to a guy who's getting paid to be an artist for the shit he's doing mm-hmm. which you gotta admit when you look at it I mean this is no casual like I'm just putting a G.I. Joe doll in the middle he's painting every tiny little detail and they're wow. super yeah. elaborate I Aren't mean they like it's amazing scale? like like everything's pretty yeah. much the same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, everything's yeah. he's built a whole miniature city himself. Yard, like, wow. Every detail of it. I mean, it's really amazing. But, I mean, I, I have wondered like he doesn't have a job. Like, how, how can he afford to buy all this? Stuff? Yeah, you do wonder that because they never even sponsored. address that. I mean, maybe you know, maybe he's well, you know, they not, caught the not, guys not who he did it. Started. So maybe they just sued the fuck out of him. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> what? Guys set what, for the, life. What, he sued him for that doll. So they got like, they got no money. <laughs> no, 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 no. The guys who beat him. That's they caught the guys who beat him. Those guys ain't got no money. Well, you don't know that. They don't. They don't ever say their names or really anything about them except. That they were in fact caught, I mean, and, and, and that and like he wasn't even the guy they wanted to get. It's well, like, no, he was sitting at the par- Okay, here's the kicker: he is a transvestite, but he's not one of those full on. <laughs> Spoiler wearing, alert! He's not one of those full on wearing a dress transvestite. Oh. He's one of those like you would never even yeah. probably know unless you were paying attention type of. It's transvestite. like a Glenn and Glenda. Oh. So he was thing? in the bar and started like drinking, and and like they overheard him talking about it, and they like, oh, oh damn, this the, guy. The plot which I'm yeah. sorry is absolutely no excuse and doesn't no, make it any worse. No of course not. Yeah. Well, there that's is no excuse for acting like that, dressing like a woman. Oh sure. You know what? Me, there's some guy in Alabama right now saying, see? 
Who says hate crimes don't help people? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that man is an artist now. That same guy is like Thanks wearing Thanks to his, racism. Yeah. <laughs> racism. <laughs> and that, that would be yeah. bold if one of those guys from, Prentice, from prison sent him a letter saying, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, where's, where's my the, cut? Yeah. yeah a thank you would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, this this sounds this Yeah, sounds but he'd great. be like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true. <laughs> You did what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. No, it sounds it, you, you you sold me on this. I really do want to watch this sometime. Yeah, probably not with the robot, but he's gonna sit there and he's gonna be like, "Let's go beat up a gay guy." <laughs> 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 he's gonna be like, "Hey, let's turn somebody into an artist no. tonight." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Corey, build me some art. Yeah, Corey, I'll show you some art. I bust out my He-Man figures. That's the greatest. Look at that. <laughs> that guy ain't got nothing on me. Yeah. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like an Errol Morris movie. You ever seen the Thin yeah, Blue Line? Yeah, it, it is kind of like an Errol Morris movie. It reminded me a lot of that. Okay. Yeah. All right, and so, Errol Morris is great. So. Yeah, B, you haven't seen the Thin Blue Line. A guy just takes a footage of it's a documentary guy puts nice music to it, takes footage and makes really something cool out of it. So did not win best uh, documentary of the Oscars when it came I out. I think yeah, well, the year it came out it I, did. I think that it was did. like eighty something, right? Yeah, way back. So when. that's not a cop movie. No, it is. Oh. It's about it's about exactly what the Thin Blue Line is. That whole line of like being an officer and where you're like going past the line of what you're allowed to do as an officer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. So anyway. Uh, Let's see. We got next. Here. Where does it transfer from the idea of being a police officer to the reality that we're all used to from dealing with douchebags <laughs> yeah. who go well beyond what their job is just <laughs> because they're on a line. freaking power trip and decide to be a dick about it? <laughs> no, we've never seen that. No cops ever do that. <laughs> hey, I do that. <laughs> all right. So we got Wake here. Movie directed by Chad Fiennes. No, I don't mention any of these. Did you see this with me, co-host? Wake, Wake, mm, the horror film. So. Damn it! I, I don't think you so. were, so you could be like a no, no, help sorry. me mourn. In this movie, we have <laughs> Jamie Lynn Sigler and Josh Stewart, and the oh, movie, Metal Soprano. Yep. Yeah, it's right. Who is looking good? Oh hell yeah, she's looking yeah, good on Entourage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here's a synopsis. Here, driving to a wedding in Los Angeles. Through the Mojave Desert, Paul and Adrian seem destined for a life of genuine love and happiness. That's the way it always goes wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Road weary, they let me turn the page here. So suspense is killing you. <laughs> what happens? <laughs> <laughs> they they decide to stop for the night at Lonely Royals Motel and Cafe. The roadside oh. artifact proves to be a strange and surreal place with an unsettling mix of travelers, including front desk manager Frank. And his promiscuous wife, Sandy. When will these white couples mm-hmm. ever learn? Well, we had that situation last night. We'll mm-hmm. talk to you about it in a little while. Ultimately, these ill-fated lovers lead Paul and Adrian down a path of tense and emotionally charged experiences. In the end, a horrifying secret from the Apollo's past is revealed with grave consequences from all the parties involved. I'm just, I got tingles already. Cyrus well, Cyrus. you shouldn't. Cause <laughs> wait, 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 it, it sucks. Is this movie vacancy? <laughs> this movie sucks. <laughs> it it does. Like it and the guy nice. came on stage, and I was going, "Wow, this guy kind of looks like a, a vapid douchebag." When he was talking, I was like, <laughs> "I'm not getting a good feeling from this." Sorry, dude, but you do. And uh, and sure enough, it's like he goes, "Oh yeah, this movie's really influenced by all my favorite horror movies, especially The Shining." There's lots of references to The Shining, oh, which I was like, "Oh, The Shining, I like The Shining." <laughs> you know, that's cool. But the the problem is yeah. this movie is nothing but shits lifted from other horror right. movies. Not tributes, just pretty much taken right Stolen. out of a bunch of yeah. other horrors. Oh, dude, and it's done, <laughs> Brian De Palma showed up at Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it's done so yeah. ham handedly. I mean, like what? it's it's two stories are going on at the same time, both involving uh the, the desk clerk here at the hotel. The other one, you're like, wait, what the fuck? Why does he keep going to this other story where he's a security guard and uh his wife is cheating on him? I mean, what does that have to do with anything? And sure enough, look, guys. All right, if you really don't know, want to know, take a break from it because I'm going to spoiler here, and I'm telling you, I'm doing you a favor. And, and note that it's not me saying because this was <laughs> this was universal. Everyone I talked to said this was crap. Uh, it's it's like a Jacob's Ladder type of thing. They die in the beginning of the movie in a car accident, and the whole hotel thing is like this limbo type of deal, right? And oh. so the other story we're seeing is how the desk clerk ended up in limbo. You know how he became the guy, the host of the limbo hotel. <laughs> 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 and it's so, so badly stoop. done. There's like a Samuel Jackson type character in there who's just really bad at doing a Samuel Jackson impression. <laughs> Just being loud is that what he's, well, he's just i mean he's, he's like babe his character from pulp fiction basically except oh. he's really not succeeding at all at doing it it's just it's a waste of time completely i wish i i wish i had something nice to say about it other than the fact there's some nice shots cinematography wise but you know hell it's like this cool looking 
hotel out in the middle of a desert, you're gonna get some cool shots. Does Jamie Lynn get you naked? Know? No. Fuck that. Another big tease. Oh, okay. <laughs> that that, that could have saved. You get to see the like the almost middle aged like wife of the desk clerk naked, but so what? Who cares? Who's yeah, she? exactly. Who's she? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's she? almost all I have to say about that. Really, just skip it. Really. Welcome to the Roy O's. Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that had to be the worst Samuel Jackson. Ever. And that's the worst. That's that's, um, it, that's that the impression kind of like I would do if I was asked to do oh. a Samuel Jackson impression. Is that I mean? Is that how the guy is in the movie? Uh, he's he's like you know quoting from the Bible wrong, <laughs> and he's got that same hair hairdo, and he's like that really like oh I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, these Did people I? have already died at the beginning of the film, and I hope they burn in hell. <laughs> Was that awesome? I, I hope like they're that. already burning in hell. Oh no. Dude. Did I make a spoiler? <laughs> <laughs> and then the shark comes in. Town. This is I'm serious, man. Yeah. <laughs> they drove right over yeah, that yeah, shark yeah, tank. They sound like the shark <laughs> came at the very beginning of the movie. <laughs> now the secret of the hotel is... Yeah, ah! no. <laughs> uh, man, okay, here's a good one that you mm-hmm. and uh, the co-host 3000 saw mm-hmm. over here. The People versus George Lucas is a movie directed by Alexandre or Philip. And... Uh, has a, it's, a, it's a documentary, so it features people in the industry like Neil Gaiman, Ray Harryhausen, Chris Gore, and other people. David David Brin, Prowse, who played David, uh, who played Darth uh, Vader. Darth right? Vader yeah. 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 Um, Who's David Brin? David Brin's a very famous science fiction author. Okay, yeah. yeah. I didn't even know who the I, fuck I, that I was. Just, <laughs> yeah, sorry. He just, is, just he's written me, like a hundred books like, or something. Yeah. And like besides George Lucas, I mean, he already screwed the pooch on Star Wars, but like just so long ago, like. I feel like everybody has done it to death, even like talking about it. Like, that was my thing. Why are people even yeah. still bringing it up? I said that I, because they were asking me to go that night, and I was like, "Look, I've, we've all talked about this to death. I mean, what yeah. can be said I mean, that we really said once about fanboys was made, it's like okay, nobody needs to bring this up ever well, again. Be, mm-hmm. And here's why: because well, I think yeah. we still know some people who don't seem to get the point that the prequels suck. Fuck yeah, <laughs> no, no. fuck yeah, yeah, we do. Well, here's okay, the, here's and the this, movie is, right this here. is literally a, it's a court case. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah okay. so, yeah, against let's see, George Lucas. Let's see what the movie's about. It says uh, this film is a no holds barred, completely uncensored yet balanced cultural examination of the conflicted dynamic between the great George Lucas and his fans over the past three decades. Chalk full of impassioned interviews, stop motion, and 3D animation, Super 8 action figure films, puppet rants, Damn, this sounds crazy. It sounds 